Okay, let's look at the last kind of, a, um, I guess, type of uh, work, and that is the work of a spring force. The work of a spring force. Now, I just want to, to uh, be reminded of this, Hooke's Law, which is, in the textbook I was looking now in the statics textbook, it's given by F equals KS. But now, what I want you to take note of is, say now, so say now we have a spring here, and I, or you, apply a force, F. Okay? You apply it. I apply it. And the spring displaces delta S, right? Or S. Then it is this F equals KS refers to my force that I'm applying, or your force that you're applying to the spring. However, what is the spring doing at the same time? It is applying minus KS. Okay? This, the force of the spring always opposes the direction of motion. So if I'm applying a force here, if applied, oh dear, applied, you get it, that's F applied, then the force that I'm applying is, is K, which is the spring constant, times this displacement, okay? However, the spring force is opposing this motion, so we can consider that it is negative KS, okay? So I just wanted you to see that, because now, when we consider the work of a spring force, again, from first principles, we have um, the spring force, let's call it Fs, cos theta ds. And then if we integrate this, we get u1 to 2 is equal to the integral of Fs cos theta ds um, from S1 to S2. But, now let's unpack this. What is Fs? Fs, F spring, is minus Ks, okay? Because it's going in the negative of the motion. What is cos theta? Theta is, the force is always in the direction of motion, in the direction of the displacement. So, theta is zero, so this becomes one. So, we, that's just a one there. And then, we have ds. So, uh, S2. So our work is given by this. Okay? So there's our work. So here they, they don't even speak about the cos theta, which I feel is a little bit sloppy, because they speak about cos theta the whole time, and then they ignore it. But the assumption here is that the force and the and the displacement is in the same direction, so cos of 0 will give us 1, so they ignore that there, and we end up with this, the integral from S1 to S2 of minus KS dS. And if you wave your magic wand and you do this integral, you're going to get this term over here. The negative, so the work of a spring is the negative, then we open the brackets, of the of half KS2 squared minus half KS1 squared. You can also write this out. I prefer doing it this way. U1 to 2 is half KS1 squared minus half KS2 squared. Alright? So we'll see that this has to do with the potential energy that's in the spring at state 1 and the potential energy in the spring at state 2. That is the work. Okay? Although they haven't touched on it yet, they haven't described this exactly as potential energy, that is the idea. It's how much energy is stored in the spring at state 1, and how much energy is stored in the spring at state 2, at time 2. Okay? So, so, I know many of you students, because I've been teaching this for a long time, you'll come to me and say, I don't, I, I have to try to remember this. Is it a minus, uh, 
uh, what's first? Is it two? Is it one? Uh, is this a minus here? Oh, I, I need to memorize this. Oh, I'm freaking out. Okay? So, all you need to do is go back to first principles. The reason why um, many students struggle so much is because they don't learn things from first principles. Okay, now listen to this. Um, maybe I can... Okay, there's some, there's some space over here. Okay. There's my spring. Say now, the spring, I stretch the spring, and the spring gets stretched there. Okay? What you need to ask yourself is, what is the direction of the spring force? Okay, well, if I'm, if I'm stretching it this way, the spring force is that way. It is opposing the motion. So there we go. There's the direction of the spring force. What's the direction of the displacement? Well, it's moving from there to there. So it's there. So will the work done by the spring force be positive or negative? Well, these vectors are opposing each other, so negative. Okay? Let's look at another example. If you take this spring and you compress it, I compress it. So it's moved in that direction. What's the direction of the spring force? The spring force is opposing the motion. So the spring force is in that direction, F. And there's my delta S, is in that direction. Is it positive or negative work? Again, these are opposing each other, so it's negative. Okay? I hope you're getting the idea here. Now, if I take a compressed spring, so now there's its equilibrium position, and I let it go. Right, I was pressing it, I was compressing it, and then I let it go. What's going to happen? It's going to move towards, towards equilibrium position. So what's the direction of displacement? There's delta S. What's the direction of the spring force? There's my F, my spring force. So am I going to get positive or negative work in this case? Positive. Finally, if I take a, I stretch a spring and then I let it come back to its equilibrium position. What's, so there's, it was initially stretched and there's its equilibrium position. Delta S is like that and the force is in that direction so we're going to have positive work. So the basic idea here that you can see is that if the spring is moving away. Again, I don't want you to memorize this because I've found often students just try to memorize formula, formulae without understanding what's going on. But if the spring is moving away from its equilibrium position, we are going to have these that oppose one another. And so we're going to have negative work. If the spring is moving towards its equilibrium position, either from being compressed or from being stretched, if both of these are moving towards the equilibrium position, we're going to have positive work. Okay? So, I hope this helps. Do you, you need to do a lot of problems. Okay, see you in the next video.